Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the University of Maryland Baltimore's 25th annual Founders Week Gala. I'm Denise Koch, and while I'm used to talking to you through a camera like this in my job as an anchor and a TV reporter, I know it's not the usual setting for our gala. Uh, we are much more familiar with being together and enjoying each other's company, chatting, laughing in person. But I am pleased to be back with UMB once again to serve as your gala host for the first virtual gala. We're getting used to those this year, aren't we? I hope and I know that you will enjoy tonight's entertainment. You will celebrate our stars and importantly feel compelled to support this important institution. You will notice behind me the beautiful Hippodrome Theater. That's because the gala was originally, as you know, scheduled to be held there, and it was going to be magnificent. As our program proceeds, you will notice a couple of iconic performance venues in the background, all contributing to tonight's theme, which is a night of stars. So let's get right into our celebration and sit down and hold on, because this is great. Please welcome the amazing Tony Award nominee, Norm Lewis. Now, Norm made history as the first African-American phantom in Phantom of the Opera. He has performed in numerous Broadway productions, including Les Miserables, where he played Javert. He also was in Porgy and Bess, Miss Saigon, and Chicago. He also has numerous TV and film credits uh, to his name, including the film Sex and the City 2, The Blacklist, Scandal, and most recently, did you see him? Jesus Christ Superstar alongside John Lennon. Please enjoy Norm and you are going to singing Stars from Les Miserables. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Norm Lewis and I'm just so honored to be here at your gala. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, and I heard it was the night of stars. So I thought what song is more appropriate than Stars from Les Miserables? There, out in the darkness, a fugitive running, fallen from God, fallen from grace. God be my witness, I never shall yield till we come face to face. Till we come face to face He knows his way in the dark Mine is the way of the Lord Those who follow the path of the righteous Shall have their reward And if they fall as loose as a fell The flame, the sword Scarce to be counted, filling the darkness with order and light. You are the sentinels, silent and sure, keeping watch in the night, keeping watch in the night. You know your place in the sky. You hold your course and your aim, and each in your season returns and returns, and is always the same. And if you fall as loose as a fell, you fall in flames, and the soul. So it is written on the doorway to paradise that those who falter and those who fall must pay the price. Lord, let me find him that I may see him. Safe behind bars, I will never rest till then. This I swear, this I swear by the stars. Wow. 
<laughs> be still my heart. What an amazing way for us to start this evening. And he is coming back. You're going to hear from Norm again. He is a phenomenal talent. All right, we want to thank you again for logging on to this virtual gala. It's unusual, but it's going to be great. We are joined tonight by students of the great university, hello, as well as its leadership, its faculty, its staff, who live UMB's mission and values each and every day. And we want to see how you're celebrating wherever you are, even if you're in your pajamas, we don't care. So I hope that you'll take a selfie on your phone and share it to social media. Use our official hashtag, which is hashtag UMB Founders 20. Once again, hashtag UMB Founders 20. Take a picture of yourself wherever you are. Maybe you're enjoying that cocktail that we're going to have demonstrated for us in just a minute. Or just turn your back to the screen and get a shot of you with Norm Lewis because I want a picture of myself with Norm Lewis. He's incredible. All right, I am so lucky to be joined here tonight by Dr. Bruce Gerald, who was recently named the seventh president of UMB. Congratulations, Dr. Gerald. So nice to see you. And nice to see you again, Bruce. Yes. We are here. We are socially distant, but we are here together. Thank you, Denise. It's a pleasure to be here. And we are eight feet apart or more, I assure you. <laughs> it's, it's great of you to, again, help us host this UMB event and all of its stars. I'm most appreciative. And for our guests out there listening in, I want to thank you also for helping us celebrate the Night of the Stars for UMB. This is our 25th annual Founders Week Gala. I'm standing here in front of the virtual Hippodrome. As you can see, this was the original place of our gala where it was scheduled. Unfortunately, we're not there. Don't you wish we could be there? Uh, we all know that COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way we live and work and play and think, everything about it. But I thank you for being here virtually. You, you give me assurance that, that the support for UMB and all of its programs is strong, and yet we can do this in a safe manner virtually. I, of course, miss seeing each of you in person. I'm an in-person kind of guy. Uh, but I'm in, I am pleased to say that there's a silver lining uh, to this virtual environment. Tonight's gala has set a new record. We have over 1,000 people in attendance. This is the highest we have ever achieved in the UMB um, history. So I want to thank you all very much uh, for making this a great success. We are joined by many of our students. We have our deans here. And in fact, I'm pleased to welcome our newest dean, uh, dean Judy Postmas, who is now the new dean of our, grad of our School of Social Work. Dean Postmas, it's a great pleasure to have you here. I look forward to many years in collaboration with you. We also have in the audience many dignitaries. I'd like to point out several. Uh, Chancellor Perman and his dear wife Andrea are there, as well as a number of the Board of Regents. Thank you for joining us here. We also have elected officials online with us. Thank you for your indispensable leadership and counsel. I'd particularly like to point one of our alumni out, alumni out uh, Senator Clarence Lamb. Senator Lamb, thank you for being a supporter of UMB. Lastly, we have many pillars of the community, too many to name, uh, and even some of our former deans present here. So thank you for being here. Thank you for helping us celebrate uh, and being a part of UMB. There are many of you out there who are also donors to UMB, and I want to express how grateful I am for the great support that you have given UMB. Now, of course, perhaps you joined us this evening virtually because you didn't have to put on your tuxedo. I would have liked that. Uh, or you're actually home in your tuxedo. I doubt that. Uh, or you may be in your PJs or, or casual wear. That's what I would be in. But however you're participating, you send a great message to me and UMB about how you understand the importance of UMB. This gala, of course, is a celebration of our past, of the way we are now, and certainly of the way we want to be in the future. And I'm just grateful every year to see how much how many donors support UMB, both large and small, uh, but it's especially meaningful this year. Uh, it's meaningful because our students are in great need. 
But, but UMB is going the extra mile in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our healthcare professionals are working overtime every day. Our researchers are looking for new cures for this disease as well as others. Uh, our staff, our social workers, our legal experts are contributing to UMB's contribution to fighting this pandemic. Our faculty and staff have learned how to teach remotely and our students are putting up with that and thriving in that environment of being virtually educated. I'm very optimistic that we will learn much from this innovation as we go along. And I'm also optimistic that we will find great medical and social cures uh, for this pandemic. Of course, you could argue we've had to take this role out of necessity. I wouldn't argue that. This is what UMB is about. We arise to these kinds of occasions uh, and, and we take care of business as well and as efficiently as possible. Many of you know uh, this is a resilient institution uh, and we do uh, represent Maryland's only health, uh, law, and human services professional school. Our mission is to improve the human condition and serve the public good of Maryland and society at large. And we are doing that every day, every hour, every minute uh, in our institution. So this has definitely changed. COVID-19 has changed uh, how we operate but it hasn't changed the why that we do these things. It's only strengthened our resolve to deal with these problems and move on uh, with life. So all of our seven schools are very, very focused on success in this mission. And I wanna thank those of you within the university broadly for the work that you put in every day to take on these challenging problems, to care for the neediest people, to work with the community, to teach, train, mentor our incredible students, everything that you do to help improve the human condition. That's generosity par excellence. Together we will we'll move ahead boldly but humbly to serve others in this institution. So I wanna thank you all for that support. Denise? Well said, Bruce, and absolutely true. We need everyone to step up. That's what we're doing this evening. That's what we're about. I would like to thank some, however, who already have. Tonight's sponsors who have made this evening possible. Thank you to those sponsors. I want to specifically acknowledge Whiting Turner, serving again as the gala's platinum sponsor. Our gratitude goes to CEO Tim Regan and his entire team. Like Tim, I believe in UMB. I believe in your purpose, in your people, and your work. On my job and in my job, I have seen it firsthand and the outreach that you have in, to the community in which you live. UMB is an anchor of that community and serves the community as well as operates there. We celebrate UMB because it is your work that keeps us healthy and safe now more than ever that protects the vulnerable, that secures our rights and system of justice, that powers our boldest ideas and our biggest breakthroughs, that fights for access and fairness, equity and opportunity, and does it with heart and with mind. And because we wanna offer more opportunity, we need everyone with us this evening from wherever you are to take out your cell phones again I know you've been texting and hashtagging, but this time I want you to text FWGALA20, F-W-G-A-L-A-20, and text it to the number 243725. I'll repeat that again and again. That's how you donate to UMB. Then post your selfie with the gala hashtag I already gave you. The text to number can also be seen on the bottom of your screen throughout the program. We urge you to do it now, do it again, do it again throughout the evening. Supporting UMB has a ripple effect that extends far and wide beyond Baltimore. The over 6,800 students enrolled in the seven schools of UMB go on to amazing careers that serve the public good of Maryland and beyond, states throughout this country. You have heard from Dr. Gerald and from me, but now let's hear from a student. Hi, I'm Tim Parker. I'm a fourth semester nursing student here at the University of Maryland. 
and I am set to graduate in December, and I plan to work as a psychiatric nurse and then continue my education and become a psychiatric nurse practitioner. All these are dreams and hopes that I thought had faded away and that weren't going to be possible because of my inability to pay for school. Uh, thankfully, I received such a blessing in 2018 and got a full scholarship to the School of Nursing, and my life has been changed forever since. Words are really indescribable to express my gratitude for the scholarship. Uh, it's changed the trajectory of my life and put me on a path to do something I'm passionate about and help people every single day. None of this would be possible if I didn't have the scholarship and the opportunities that it's presented me with. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, and thank you for sharing your story with us, and thank you for going into the field of nursing. You are needed now more than ever. So again, I'm going to be annoying about this. If you text FWGALA22 243725 now, we can continue to change the trajectory for many other students like Tim. All right, so now something fun. I would love to raise a glass to this amazing institution. I know that you received an email earlier this week with a list of ingredients for a cocktail. If you would like to make this gala a little bit more fun I would and a little more interactive, I would suggest that you get those ingredients now, grab them now. Please join me in welcoming the Classic Catering People's mixologist, Christina Little. And she is now going to demonstrate tonight's signature cocktail, Time Will Tell. Hi everybody, my name is Christina Leo. I'm with Sip and Roll and I'm going to prepare a cocktail called Time Will Tell for classic catering people. And this is a very easy to make drink. I'm going to prepare for two people a batch. Very simple, anybody can do it at home. The ingredients are salmon rye, uh, lemon juice, and maple syrup. What we're also going to use is fresh lemons and sometimes sprints. Very, very simple, but I would like to say a few words about the ingredients and the uh, liquor we use for this. Uh, Sanamore is a Baltimore-based uh, distillery, and what's very nice about this uh, rye that it has a vanilla and cinnamon undertone, which is perfect for fall and uh, holiday cocktails to make. So let's get to it and let me show you how simple to make this drink. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to use the syrup because the syrup needs to be diluted in the liquor to be easy to dilute in the lemon juice. So what I'm going to do is measure out three ounces of the maple syrup. This one is also a very nice product. It's a spiced maple syrup, so this is not your regular pancake syrup. This is for cocktails. This is already 50-50 diluted, so it's easy to mix in drinks. When you get your pancake syrup, it will just stick on the side of the glass and you won't be able to mix it easily, so I do not suggest that to use. What I'm going to do, I only put a little bit of lemon juice for now. Not the whole amount what we need. And I'm going to do just two ounces of the liquor first. When we make a batch, we make a larger amount. So you have to start with a little bit of thickness first to be able to dilute it properly. So now I'm going to stir it. That's all you do. You stir it. You don't have to shake, you don't have to put ice, and you don't have to do anything else. Just stir it until everything is diluted. And when the syrup is well diluted in the liquor, and we have this nice and smooth base for the drink. And now, I'm going to put some ice in it. And when I put some ice, remember this is for two people. This is exactly two cocktails in one. 
I'm going to finish adding the rest of the liquor, which is going to be four more ounces, because I already put two. And then I'm going to finish adding the rest of the ingredients, which is more lemon juice. This one is a fresh squeezed one. You can buy them in a grocery uh, lines anywhere in the fridge area. Or you can squeeze your own lemons, which takes a little bit of long, longer time, but this is very convenient to use. So I'm going to put 10 ounces of the lemon. So remember we already put some in the beginning. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to add more ice. And I'm going to make sure that I stir up the bottom properly. So all the lemon juice dilutes with the ice, the liquor, and the maple syrup. Very, very simple. As you can see, anybody can do it. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to take a few string of time off from my bench here. And I'm just going to squeeze it a little bit. Just until you can smell the scent of the time. It's so beautiful. I'm going to put it in the mason jar and I'm going to cut a slice of lemon and as you can serve your drink, a person can squeeze the lime wheel into the drink which is going to add another extra scent of citrus. So, this would be it. Time will tell. Please enjoy. All right. Thank you, Christina. Cheers to you. Cheers to you, Bruce. Great. Cheers. Yeah, it's iced tea. <laughs> what can I tell you? We have to drive home. I hope you have the real thing. That's what I hope. All right. Thank you, Christina, for showing us how to make it. And then when I get home, I'm going to try it. It's, it's, I've never had a drink with time in it before. All right. That leads us now perfectly to our first raffle item, which is a virtual cooking class for six from the classic catering people. With all the ingredients, you get the ingredients and the cooking class, including those for special cocktails, such as the one that you just saw. And those ingredients get sent to you, by the way. You can text the number below to purchase a raffle ticket. It's on your screen there. If there are any left, we hope they're not. And perhaps you would consider once again, also donating to UMB the amount that you would normally spend on a right, nice restaurant meal with cocktails. That is one thing. We have saved a lot of money in this pandemic, so now let's donate it. Let's put our money to work. <laughs> Raffle winners will be chosen randomly by an independent software platform, and the winners will be notified in the coming days. So cooking class for six with all the ingredients sent directly to you. Now it is my pleasure to introduce to you some of the stars of this evening the Founders Week Award winners. Four awards, as you know, are given each year, each signifying some outstanding accomplishment in one facet of UMB's mission. Let's find out about this year's winners. This winner for launch, let's make some history. Launch. We're launching. That is the first drone transport ever of a human organ for transplant. And it's a solution pioneered by this year's David J. Ramsey Entrepreneur of the Year, Dr. Joseph Scalia. It shouldn't take three airplanes and flight crew and 75 text messages to move a 10 pound box, not for a life saving organ. And so uh, I conceptualized and designed a system that was app based that would allow for the on demand immediate shipment of human organs 
donor to recipient hospital. Nicknamed Uber for Organs, this transformational system has gained worldwide attention and launched two companies, Medigo and Mission Go. Dr. Scalia hopes to have everyone in the transplant community operating on the system over the next year. More than 100 people were involved in the shipment of the organ that we transported in April 2019. That team of 100 was made up of representation from the School of Engineering, the School of Medicine, the hospital at the medical center here itself, the shock trauma center, helipad employees, nurses, doctors, um, uh, organ procurement staff from the Living Legacy Foundation. It was really incredible. Another proud Maryland alum is this year's Educator of the Year. Popular law professor Russell McLean says his law school experience was transformative. Just to have the opportunity to contribute in some small way to um, the experiences of new, new crops of students as they come in each year um, is just is all the reward, honestly, that, that I need. It is, it, it is uh, wonderful to, to see their faces eager and ready to learn uh, about the law. As Associate Dean for Diversity and Inclusion, Professor McLean is passionate about increasing the number of underrepresented groups in the legal profession. An expert on the impact of implicit bias on academic progress, he is writing a book called Guide to Law School for Minority Students. The single most important thing that I try to communicate to students is that they belong. Um, they belong in law school, they belong in the profession. And, you know, we all face difficulty, we all face challenges in our lives and our professional paths. Uh, but for me, if I can communicate to students that they fit here, right, that the challenges don't mean that you don't, you don't belong or that this isn't the, the right place for you, that, that gives them a much greater likelihood of success. Internationally recognized in the science of aging, Dr. J. Magaziner focuses his award-winning research on hip fracture, health and long-term care, and how best to study older populations. Inspired by his grandfather who lived with their family, Dr. Magaziner says his 38 years at the University of Maryland, Baltimore have afforded him countless opportunities. I was a faculty member at one time. I became the head of a division. And then that division matured and I became the head of a department. At the same time, my work matured more. I collaborated with some very, very fine scientists and we put a center on aging together. Dr. Magaziner's interdisciplinary research has earned him two consecutive merit awards from the National Institute on Aging, which is given to the highest quality and top funded research grants. The creativity and the willingness to reach out and, and work with people in different parts of the university and the willingness of those people to reciprocate and become involved in projects together has been what's made this a very exciting place. Francis King Carey Law Professor Maureen Sweeney is our 2020 Public Servant of the Year. Director of the Immigration Law Clinic Professor Sweeney works tirelessly on behalf of people facing asylum or immigration crises. People who pick up and leave their home tend to be extraordinary people uh, and they uh, have great gifts and I love working with the population and love being able to help them navigate what is a hostile legal environment for them here in the United States. Over her 16 years at Cary School of Law, Professor Sweeney has given students the opportunity to combine legal theory with practice of immigration law. It's challenging to teach because it's constantly changing, uh, but it's also uh, really rewarding because students are very excited about getting involved in these issues and working with immigrant communities. The administration has been incredibly supportive of our work in the immigration clinic, uh, and students come to Maryland because they're interested in public interest work and specifically for immigration as well. For their outstanding accomplishments and extraordinary commitment, please join the University of Maryland Baltimore in congratulating our 2020 Founders Week Award winners. Hi, Dr. Mohan Santa, and on behalf of the entire University of Maryland medical system, I want to send a hearty congratulations to all of the Founders Week Award winners. 
On behalf of our system, thank you for everything you do to advance healthcare in all of the communities that we are blessed to live and serve. Thank you. Dr. Magaziner, Dr. Scalia, Professor Sweeney, Professor McLean, I am so proud for you to receive this award and so proud to be associated with you at this great university. I wish I could be on that stage right there uh, and, and be together with you so that I could hand you your award so that I could, yes, shake your hand. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, and to congratulate you in person. But, you know, we can't do that now, but I can hear a lot of people applauding in the audience, and I certainly am applauding. So congratulations on this wonderful accomplishment. And for the rest of you in the audience, I'm so play pleased to be able to showcase these colleagues to show you some of the amazing achievements that occur at this great university. I'm impressed, and I hope you're impressed as well. As you know, UMB is also part of the West Baltimore community. We very highly value our relationships with members in this community and your support through your donations and other means, and particularly the UMB Foundation is a strong supporter of the West Baltimore program. Your support has allowed us to deepen our existing relationships, create new relationships, with individuals, with businesses, with schools and churches, and other agencies there. Thank you for helping that. with that. One of our special relationship schools is the James McHenry School. Chris Turk, principal of the James McHenry School, has a few words for us now. Chris? Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Turk, and I am the proud principal of James McHenry Elementary Middle School. And I'm here with you this evening to first express our gratitude and to let you know how your support over the course of the last seven months has had a profound and positive impact on our students and families. Uh, you've come through to support us with laptops when we needed more. You've come through to help us ensure that we close the digital gap and provide our families with internet when we needed your help. You came, you delivered on the Comcast Essential Program, which is just outstanding, that has 75 of our families able to get online and get into distance learning every day. In the springtime, when COVID-19 hit us all really hard and we had to make arrangements and find another space to help us distribute packets and resources to families, the CEC opened its doors and welcomed, welcomed our families and students with open arms. And here I stand today, still getting support from the UMB COVID-19 emergency response, and we still need support moving forward. We still need help with laptops, with internet access, with iPads. All of this is about closing and in equity gap, a digital gap that we all know is unfair and is impacting all of our students and families that, that need to get online every day and make virtual learning the best thing possible. We couldn't be here today without you. All of you are difference makers. All of you live the 100% for 100% mindset with us. We value you and we still need your support. Uh, so I look forward uh, to our continued partnership and I thank you for not only saying it, but living it every day. All right, you go, Chris. You can feel his enthusiasm and passion. An anchor institution that cares about the community in which it sits. That isn't that common, but UMB does it, and you just heard it right from that principle. Um, how can you not want to donate, all right? You're sitting there, pull out your phone. I've been telling you how to do it. You know how to do it. It's written on below me right now. I know it is. All right, at this moment in the evening, if we were all together, which would be so wonderful, dinner, I think, would be about to be served. Oh, look at that. I have never been in a kitchen that looks like that. And I know you are probably hungry if you have not eaten yet. So I would like to now introduce Chef Linwood Dame, owner and chef, of course, of Linwood's Restaurant, great restaurant and catering, who is going to now lead us through a cooking demonstration. Don't worry about taking notes because we're going to send the recipe, uh, recipe to you after the gala itself. So let's take a lesson in cooking from someone who knows. Good evening. My name is Linwood Dane, chef owner of Linwood's Restaurant and Catering, Owings Mills, Maryland. I am so pleased and honored to be part of your Founders Week Gala. UMB is a great institution doing great work in our community. And until we can gather together again and have a great party, and since we're cooking so much more at home, I have decided to share a Tuscan steak recipe with you that I have been cooking for my family for many, many years. Let's get started. 
There are six ingredients for this steak. Salt, pepper, sugar, olive oil, rosemary, and lemon, plus our steak. All right, first let's talk about the steak. This is a 16 ounce New York strip steak. The reason I have a 16 ounce New York strip steak is I want a nice thick cut so I can create a really nice crust and have the temperature be from one end to the other the same. Let me go over a few steps before grilling. Pull your steak out of the refrigerator and let it sit for 30 minutes. After those 30 minutes, pat it dry. I've already created my rub by chopping my rosemary and adding it to the salt, pepper, and sugar. I'm now gonna coat the steak with olive oil on both sides and on the side. And then I am gonna coat it with the rub. Be very generous with this rub. You wanna create a really nice crust. So just watch how much I put on here. When you put it on here, pat it dry. Again on the other side, and be generous. Do not be shy with the seasoning. Now let's go to the grill. So a couple tips before putting your steak on the grill. Make sure you oil down your grill first. Secondly, super hot, 700 degrees today for this grill. Also, do not keep flipping your steak over and over again. I'm gonna put it on one side and I'm gonna let it sit there for about four minutes. Okay, it's been four minutes. And there you have it. Look at that crust. That is a beautiful thing. Do not touch it one time. Again, another four minutes and it will be ready. So we're back in the kitchen. Let's let the steak rest for a good 10 minutes, even 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna put a little lemon right over the top. A little squeeze, just a little bit of lemon, right over the top of that steak. Okay, so look how beautiful this steak looks. I'm ready to cut it, let's see what we have. It's nice and tender, look at that color. So this steak can serve two people easily free if you have a light eater but I know for my family only for two so what we do is we slice it and I put it on the plate you can see it's mid rare beautiful I made a little arugula salad with a red wine vinaigrette and a little shaved parmesan over the top and this is what you have ready for dinner tonight your event organizer will be sending you the recipe and I hope you try it Thank you so very much for having me and enjoy your evening. Okay, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> Where's ours? I'm ready, I'm hungry, looks good to me. What do you think? I'll stop by Linwood's on my way home tonight, I can <laughs> yes. tell you that. Tuscan steak, <laughs> I demand it. And speaking of Linwood's, Linwood's has graciously donated a raffle item for a complete dinner for 10 in your home. So buy your raffle ticket, if there are any remaining again, and you might win more delicious options from Chef Damon. I know you're worried. You probably haven't had 10 people in your house unless you have a big family in many, many months. Whenever this pandemic is over and you can have a big dinner party, this will be it for you, okay? So dinner for 10 is one of the raffle items. Your support, as I said, helps UMB achieve excellence. And speaking of excellence, Bruce? Thank you. <laughs> Great institutions like UMB achieve success through its people, their talent, their expertise, and their dedication to our mission. In today's world, obviously resources are crucial in driving our university's growth and progress. Here at UMB, we are in our uh, $750 million Catalyst campaign. This was formally announced three years ago we have gotten great support from our loyal alumni and benefactors and friends of UMB. The purpose of this fundraising event is to enhance faculty excellence, to provide student scholarship support for our many students in need, uh, to develop new research and clinical research initiatives, 
to spur entrepreneurism, particularly in the West Baltimore community, and drive our community engagement. I am pleased tonight to announce that we recently surpassed uh, a, a significant milestone in this progress. Over $575 million has been raised. Woo. This puts us over 75% of our campaign goal. Yeah. That's a wonderful accomplishment, and I want to thank all of you for that. This could not have occurred without the leadership of our UMB Foundation members, uh, as well as the leadership of the campaign co-chairs. Dr. Ellen Yankelo and Mr. Brian Gibbons. This, this Catalyst campaign would never have achieved this stellar milestone without their support. So Ellen and Brian, thank you very much for your leadership in this. And for those of you who have contributed, thank you for your support. It is now my pleasure to recognize seven honorees with the UMB Catalyst for Excellence Award. These honorees are exemplary uh, in their support of UMB, each within their respective school while serving as visionaries uh, for future progress at UMB and within their school. Tonight we celebrate their notable accomplishments and support to UMB, and I want to express my personal thank you and gratitude to each of them for their tremendous support and the impact that it will produce. Let's take a look at this year's honorees. The School of Dentistry honors the class of 2020 for overcoming unprecedented challenges during their final semester. Despite the pandemic, they successfully completed their graduation requirements and licensure exams. And in the spirit of generosity, they donated their class treasury to the School of Dentistry's Emergency Student Assistance Fund. Elva Elizabeth Tillman is an active and dedicated alumna of the Francis King Carey School of Law. A frequent mentor to students and an advocate for the law school, she has more than 40 years experience as an attorney, administrator, urban planner, researcher, and professor. She served on the alumni board and is the founding donor to the Larry S. Gibson Fellowship Endowment. The School of Medicine honors advocate and friend Howard S. Brown. The philanthropist and developer donated over $4 million to ensure innovation in trauma care. He also gave $1.5 million to the School of Law to honor his father, David S. Brown, who graduated in 1933. And the legacy continues. Two of his three daughters and a son-in-law are School of Medicine alums, and his granddaughter began her medical education here this fall. Dr. Ruth J. Lee supports the School of Nursing through impactful volunteer and philanthropic endeavors. She served on the Alumni Council and is currently president of the school's Alumni Association. She led the efforts to establish two endowed scholarships, one recognizing the 10th anniversary of the Doctor of Nursing Practice Program and the other to honor an esteemed faculty member. Daniel E. Wagner is a catalyst for student success by supporting the Pharmapreneurship Initiative. He established a collection of annual endowed scholarships to honor the nine family members who graduated from School of Pharmacy. He has ensured the collection of Wagner Family Scholarships in Pharmapreneurship will be funded each year during his lifetime and continue in perpetuity. And the School of Social Work honors the Positive School Center, a program in the Social Work Community Outreach Service. Through work with individual school leadership, the Positive School Center introduces the skills and mindset to proactively and restoratively transform school climate. The team exemplifies commitment, innovation, education, advocacy, and philanthropy, all through the lens of social, racial, and economic justice. Congratulations to all our Catalyst Award honorees. Hi everyone, we're the DICE Solutions team and we want to say congratulations to all the award winners tonight. And we also would like to send a special shout out to all the first responders, all the researchers at UMB. You guys have worked long, hard, and tirelessly over the last few months and we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good evening. Have a good thank night. You. Have a good evening. Waving right back at you, all right. What an inspiring group of people, including the entire School of Dentistry, who managed to finish in that really challenging spring that we all shared. 
This is a night of stars indeed. And speaking of stars, I told you it would happen. I'd like to welcome back Norm Lewis. This time he is joined by his very close friend and acclaimed Broadway actress and concert soloist, Nikki Renee Daniels. Together they are going to perform a song I think you'll all recognize. We thank them for singing and spreading cheer, which we all need during this pandemic. You're allowed to dance while you watch. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back again. Uh, for the second song, uh, I thought I would invite someone who I love dearly, my really good friend, Nikki Renee Daniels. Nikki? Hello. Uh, Nikki and I have been uh, in many different shows, uh, concerts, and on Broadway together. Uh, Les Miserables, mm -hmm. uh, we did Porgy and Bess together. That's right. And, uh, and you sang at my wedding. And I sang at your wedding, yes. which was probably the best production of anything yeah. I've ever seen. It was in Central Park, yep. which was awesome. <laughs> anyway, we're here to celebrate you um, and thank you for what you're doing at, uh, this is such a great gala. This next song is Unforgettable. <laughs> Unforgettable. That's what you Thank you for that, Norm and Nikki. That was phenomenal. It will certainly be unforgettable for me having heard that. Uh, there are some other unforgettable people today that we're honoring, and there's one special award that I'd like to talk about now. UMB recognizes one additional award, the UMB Foundation Distinguished Service Award. 
This is a person who participates with the UMB Foundation and its many partners uh, to serve UMB and its programs. We recognize the outstanding achievements of an individual or entity who has substantially contributed to enhancing and sustaining this great university. This year, UMB recognizes the Alicia and Yaya Foundation, founded by Marco and Debbie Chacon. They have been powerful advocates and mentors regarding the strategic direction of our graduate school and a number of our educational programs. In 2019, their foundation established the Alicia and Yaya Global Fellowship Program. The objective of this foundation was to enhance global learning experiences for our students, to support innovation in global health, foster relationships between UMB and institutions in Costa Rica where Marco was raised and first educated. The Chacones have provided support in addition uh, to these programs to graduate school students who have need for emergency funds in this very difficult time. And as if that were not enough, they have also provided support to sustain operations in the final construction phase of our new community engagement center. And for those of you who have not seen this center, it is just phenomenal right there on the edge of the biopark at Poppleton Street. I can't wait to see our programs actually have a physical presence there. Finally, uh, Marco and Debbie have, have um, pledged support to develop a new cohort of our UMB Cure Scholars. You may be aware that the Cure Scholars is a pipeline program getting students in the sixth grade and carrying them through to the twelfth grade with, with mentorship and, and training in STEM and other scholarly activities. It's been highly successful and they're going to support a cohort through those years. The UMB Foundation recognizes Alicia and Yaya Foundation and the dedication of Marco and Debbie Chacon to UMB, our students, and our community with the 2020 Distinguished Service Award. Marco? I am an alum of the institution. I went to grad school at the University of Maryland. Um, and I had the privilege of meeting wonderful teachers and many of, or several of which in my mentors. So my formation, scientifically speaking, but also lessons of life that were to craft, you know, my future. Uh, we we'll learn uh, within the halls of uh, such a wonderful place as UMB and College Park for that matter. Um, second, I would say that um, after graduating from the university, both Dev and I uh, founded a couple of companies. Um, a, and both of them eventually found their way uh, to settle at the University of Maryland Biopark. Um, one of them became very successful, you know, Paragon Bioservices. And um, a, most definitely the success of that enterprise uh, can be traced and did measure by uh, the wonderful support that we received, you know, from, from UMB, all the way from the office of the then President, President Turner, subsequently President Gerald, uh, the President of the Biopark, Jim Hughes, and his entire group, to many to mention. The Chacones created the Alicia and Yaya Foundation last year to honor Marco's mother, Alicia, and a longtime friend known to the family as Yaya. Uh, the mission, if you ask, uh, of the foundation is precisely to support uh, educational pursuits um, education for young people, um, and particularly those um, who, by reason of uh, circumstance, so socioeconomic in particular, uh, and the terrible impact of low expectations, they find it difficult to fulfill their greatest potential. To the degree that we can help um, uh, some kids do that, uh, it, it would be absolutely uh, wonderful to achieve. Um, so that is the mission of the, of the, of the foundation. 
The Alicia and Yaya Global Fellowship Program will enhance global learning experiences, support innovation in global health, and foster relationships between UMB and institutions in Costa Rica. They also support the Graduate School Student Emergency Fund to help students alleviate unexpected financial difficulties brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Their generosity helped complete the new Community Engagement Center and will sustain operations. And they pledge support to a new cohort of UMB Cure Scholars as they receive innovative STEM programming and academic support through the pipeline from sixth grade to high school graduation. It is humbling. It is certainly, um, we're forever grateful for, for, for the recognition. Um, and, um, and I think in, in, in no certain terms, it you know, motivates both of us to continue to try to identify and, and, and work with, with the university and, and its leadership. Um, we are, I cannot put it in any other way, we're for very great. For their dedication to UMB and to innovation in global health and education, the UMB Foundation recognizes the Alicia and Yaya Foundation and Marco and Debbie Chacon with the 2020 Distinguished Service Award. Congratulations, Marco and Debbie. It is such a pleasure to have you the recipient of this award. I thank you for your generosity to UMB. With partners like you, how can we fail? We are destined for success. Thank you again. As all of you know, uh, COVID-19 presents a lot of challenges. And one of the things that it presents challenges for are resources. And we need people to be as generous as possible to help us through these difficult times. Let's hear from Stephanie Weber. Stephanie is a recent graduate of the School of Social Work. Stephanie? Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephanie Weber. I am a 2020 graduate of the School of Social Work. I am one of many recipients of the Student Emergency Fund. Um, that fund has helped me and a plethora of other students continue to pursue their dreams and finish their master's degree. What most people don't think about when they think about students is that most of us are an eclectic mix of students, especially at the University of Maryland, who all have jobs and families and you know other obligations outside of school. When COVID-19 hit, things really kind of fell apart for a lot of students. A lot of students felt financially insecure, unable to know whether they were gonna pay for their families, their rent, their food, anything like that. Um, it's important to know that, especially in my situation, I lost my job and didn't have any communication with unemployment. So by getting the funds, I was able to make sure that I had food and I had rent and I was able to complete my degree. And that was the biggest accomplishment of my entire life. All right, you go, Stephanie. That, and that is one incredible school of social work as well that she is part of. All right, so you heard it from Stephanie, the need for financial support this year in particular, increasingly important um, for the future as well. But this year, we don't know how long these challenges are going to be with us. If you have been passively watching, even if you didn't dance, and I don't know how you didn't, but in any case, if you're passively watching, now is the time to pick up your phone, stand up, stretch, and text. I'm going to give it to you again. F W Gala 20. F W G A L A 20. And text it to the number 243725. I'm sure that's somewhere on your screen as you're looking at me right now. Help support UMB. You see the kind of work that they do and they need our support. It is also last call to purchase raffle tickets if they aren't already sold out. I can't say enough about what your support, whatever you can give. Again, you didn't go out to dinner tonight, how about giving that much? What your support means to this institution and that it is making a real and palpable difference in Baltimore, in Maryland, and everywhere that UMB graduates go around the world. Please think about what you can give and text the number below. Thank you so much for your generosity and support. I would just like to say to all of you, thank you on behalf of our James McHenry and West Baltimore community. We appreciate you. We express our gratitude for your generosity and we thank you for being here, for, for supporting us throughout this time and for your ongoing support to ensure that we continue to move this work together for our students and families. Thank you so much. 
So I hope you guys are feeling really generous this evening and can really help to this wonderful fund. The Student Emergency Fund really, really helps a lot of students. All right, you heard it from the students, from the community. Anything that you can contribute tonight will help. We are here to try and continue the fantastic work being done by UMB. Think of the money that you saved on a new outfit tonight. Think of the money you saved on not hiring a car. Think of the money that you saved on not going out for drinks afterwards, all right? You're in your pajamas, you're comfortable, now it's time to give. There are many benefits to a virtual gala for those of you sitting at home. We may keep this up just because it's so much easier. All right, keep texting, keep sharing your messages with UMB Founders 20. Hashtag UMB Founders 20. Get the word out there so everybody knows about the fantastic work being done by UMB. And now, hold your breath. We're going to welcome back Norm Lewis, and he is going to perform for us Music of the Night from Phantom of the Opera. It has been such an honor to be with all of you tonight, and I want to say congratulations again for having such a wonderful gala. I chose this next song because it is signifying what I think we need right now in this, in this time, because we are having such difficulties and challenging times right now. Music and art really soothe us in many different ways. And so I chose Music of the Night from The Phantom of the Opera. Sweet 
That leaves wow. me speechless. It's just an unbelievable song. And Norm, thank you for singing that for us, and thank you for letting us benefit from your beautiful voice. Uh, as I think some of you know, this is my first Founders Gala as president of UMB. For me, it will certainly be one to remember. I will particularly remember how we were able to be flexible and pivot from an in-person gala to a remote virtual gala like this one. And even with that difficulty of pivoting in that way, we have set a new record for attendance. And I think there's a message there and that people are so supportive of UMB in spite of all that's going on around us. So I want to thank you for your incredible support and generosity to this university. Uh, it will be remembered uh, just as I hope you'll remember that performance. I want to thank all of those of you who put together this gala for us, the program uh, arranged for all of the uh, Norm Lewis and Nikki performances. They're phenomenal. I want to wish that all of you would stay safe and well at home uh, and that we may be able to party in person uh, next year. And then lastly, I want to thank the marvelous Denise Koch. Denise, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, for being with us again here tonight. It's such a treat to share the stage with you, Denise. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. And I think you're right. We will never forget this virtual gala. It is memorable. Our 25th annual and first virtual gala has come to a close now. I hope you've enjoyed yourself and you've learned something, how to cook, how to drink, and how to dance, I hope. Um, thank you for your support. You can continue to give throughout the evening. There's no end to that texting, you know. And we, as he said, we want you to stay safe. And let's hope that next year we see everybody in person for the 26th annual gala. Good night. <laughs>